Thank you for attending. My name is Dan Connor. I'm the team leader of the Thermal Imaging Digitization Tools Senior Project. With me are my teammates, Bob Watkins, Frank Naylor, and Andrew Guerrero. Our faculty advisor is Professor Raymond Jeffries. Our senior product coordinator is Professor Victor Marcus. And our industry advisors are Brian E. Cramier and Timothy Poland from the U.S. Army Materials Systems Analysis Activity. Some of you may be wondering, what is the thermal image discretization tool in the first place? Well, our team was assigned by the U.S. AMSAA to develop a software tool to analyze temperature stresses on circuit boards. These circuit boards are described in the image file. This image file has two elements. On the screen on your left, you can see there's a thermograph region, which is a thermal image of the circuit board, and a temperature scale region, which, is, which describes the range of temperatures within that thermal image. Now, as the end result, once these images are analyzed, which we'll describe later in this presentation, the output is the maximum temperature described in each region, user-defined region, of the thermograph. In the picture above, there's 10 by 10 x by y divisions. By knowing these maximum temperatures within certain regions of these circuit boards, the US AMSAA can better understand where dangerous threats and stresses can occur in the field. As a team, we decided to approach this problem in two software environments, one being in MATLAB, one being in Mathematica. In each environment, we will follow a similar design. You can follow me on the screen here. The first element is the graphical user interface, which will accept these parameters describing the image. The second is a meta file that will store these image parameters. The third is an image processing file, which will implement filtering and temperature calibration algorithms. The fourth Finally, is an output file, which will display the maximum temperatures in each user-defined region of the thermograph. Now that an introduction has been made, I'll pass on to Bob to talk about the goals and the project management. Thank you, Dan. Now our goals. To complete our project, we separated our project into four main goals. The first goal was to design an intuitive graphical user interface. This graphical user interface, also called Vue in our project, will collect all the information from the user so that the file may be processed. This code generated will also need to process the file over a user-defined grid. Our next goal was to ensure that the output of maximum temperature data which we got from the thermal processing file was in the correct format which AMSA had required for further processing. The last goal was to supply user documentation for both software packages so that anyone can easily use it. A little bit about our schedule. This is the schedule which we proposed in, our, in the beginning of the year. We started with mobilization as well as research to give us the ideas for a design and development stage. Our design and development stage included designing the graphical user interface, meta file formats, and thermographic processing file. After this step, we went to the procurement stage, which is where we obtained all of our supplies to finish our project. After the procurement stage, we hit the testing and evaluation. This is where we tested all the images which AMSA had gave, given us at the beginning of the year. Once we tested all the images, we needed to evaluate that the maximum temperature data which we, which we acquired was correct and within a suitable distance from what they expected. This is our budget. We were given from our sponsor, AMSA, $1,040. We spent $940 on testing and verification supplies and $100 on our post. A little bit about our research. Upon meeting with AMSA, we found that the team members who this software is intended for are proficient in MATLAB and Mathematica. Once we decided these were the two softwares that we were going to use, we needed to do some basic research on the syntax as well as the functionality of both softwares. Once this, this basic understanding was completed, we decided to research some more specific topics. These specific topics included the graphical user interface, meta file formats, image properties, filtering techniques and temp temperature matching methods. Now I'll hand it over to Frank to elaborate more on this research and how it was in our project. Thanks, Bob. We determined that the <clears throat> best way to approach this problem was to split into two groups. One group would focus on MATLAB, while the other focused on Mathematica. This way, if either group encountered a critical error while developing their program that would prevent completion, we could consolidate and focus on a single program. Both teams followed a similar design format consisting of a graphical user interface, meta file, 
image processing file, and an output file. The graphical user interface accepts user inputs for image parameters, including the file name, the location of the top left and bottom right corner points for both the thermographic and scale region, the number of X and Y divisions which determine how the image will be partitioned, the maximum and minimum temperatures from the scale, and they also have the option to name the output file. By default, this is output.txt. When the process image button is selected, the image, these, these <coughs> data values are stored to the meta file and the image processing function is called. The image processing function begins by importing the data from the meta file. Before, uh, some preparation is required before the analysis can be completed. This includes locating and separating the thermograph and scale regions, filtering the temperature scales so only one color exists for each row, partitioning the image, and performing temperature matching. Temperature matching was one of the greatest hurdles we face when developing our software. Both teams approach the problem in a slightly different way. Before I can go further into that, I need to provide some information about how digital images are stored on computers. Images are stored as a three-dimensional integer array of size row by column by three. The three dimensions represent the intensity of the three primary colors, red, green, and blue. These values range from zero to 255 and result in over 16 million different color combinations. <coughs> Pixels occur at the intersection of, of rows and columns, and each pixel has a set of RGB values. The MATLAB temperature matching algorithm begins by scanning and storing the pixel values for each row of the scale, and storing them in a row. Since we already know the maximum and minimum temperature, as well as the number of rows in the scale, we can calculate the temperature increment, which describes how much the temperature changes from row to row in the scale. This is done using the first formula on the screen. To determine the temperature value of a given pixel in the image, we use the formula for the distance between two points in three dimensions. We calculate the distance between the selected pixel and the three pixel values in each row and every row of the scale. These distances are stored in a temporary array, and the shortest distance value represents the closest call to match. The location of this value in the array is known as the index. With these values, we can determine the temperature of the pixel using the third and final formula on the screen, which subtracts the product of the temperature increment and index from the maximum temperature. Once the image is partitioned, we evaluate each pixel in the user-defined grid. It's, the, the pixel is scanned, the temp, it is converted to a temperature value, this temperature value is stored in another array. Once each pixel in the partition has been scanned and the temperature is stored, we can determine the maximum temperature in that region. This maximum temperature is stored to the output array, and this process is completed for each partition of the image. Um, the MSA requested a specific output format that required us to pad the output array by a rectangle of null values negative 9,999. Once the array was padded, we can write these data values to the output file in a single stream format shown in the picture at the bottom of the slide. To verify the accuracy of programs, we ran them on all the images supplied by MSAA and compared the values between programs. There are several image formats supplied and our programs were expected to work on all types. I would like to note that both programs successfully completed, both teams successfully completed the programs with the design specifications. I'd like to pass to Andrew for continuation of the answers. Thanks, Frank. So now that we've completed our projects, here are some future enhancements that can be made. Optimizing our code is a big factor for our projects. Having a better, more efficient code will allow for a simpler user input process, as well as a faster runtime. It will allow us to reduce the chance of running into error when running our software. Next, we would like to test our software on more sample images. <coughs> Having a new variety of complex images will allow us to test for possible errors and uh, apply additional fixes. As well, we currently use a corner points method in order to locate our thermograph and temperature scale from an image that the user inputs. This adds more work for the user, so ideally we would like to have it found automatically using some type of function. And last, we would like to improve our image processing filtering method in order to clean out any invalid data that's left on the thermograph. For example, if you look at the image on the left, you'll notice that there are red outlines on the thermograph. These outlines are left by chips during silk screening. The outlines, since they're red, are defined as the temperature value on the temperature scale. And if you look on the right, 
On some corners of the thermograph, you'll notice that there are small pixels that actually vary from what the entire region shows. These small pixels, along with the outlines from the chips, have a chance of being defined, of, defined as a maximum temperature value during the matching phase when the maximum temperature could be some other value. So in summary, we're reviewing the project of finding maximum temperature stresses from a circuit board using its thermal image and temperature scale. We did so by creating a user-friendly graphical user interface, which would collect all required information. This information is then written to a, map, a meta file, which is sent to the image processing code, which would separate the thermograph and the temperature scale. Then you would find the maximum temperatures from the thermograph using the user-defined grid. These maximum temperatures are then written to an output file in the appropriate output format. Originally, we decided on a dual software approach, splitting our group in, our group in half for MATLAB and Mathematica. We did so in case that any group hit a roadblock, then we could just switch to one software path for the working software. Fortunately, both groups were able to progress to the end, so now we have our program working on both software environments. And to make sure that any user is able to use our software, we created user manuals, which we tested for both software packages. We would now like to show a demo of our program in MATLAB. Okay, as you can see, MATLAB is already installed on the PC. <coughs> Once you get into the MATLAB command window, the user will only have to type thermo tool followed by an enter. This will bring up the graphical user interface which we designed. Once this graphical user interface opens, the user will click the open button to bring up an image browser. <coughs> this image browser is where you can pick the file which you would like to be processed and it's contained with all the pictures that we got from AMSA. Once the file was picked, the prompt will appear to tell the user to please select enter after clicking on each corner point. After the prompt is read, the user will click the top left and bottom right corner points of both the image and the scale corresponding to its button. Once this is completed, the user can put in the rest of the data into the edit text boxes. The first set of data is the X and Y divisions which they would like the image to be partitioned into. The second set of data is the temperature data, which the user will need to put the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature in. After all the data has been entered, the user has an option to determine what they want the output file to be named. Once this is complete, the user will click process image, and after a few seconds a prompt will appear letting the user know that it, the process has been completed. This will also open up the output file that was just processed to show the user for verification. Now back to Andrew for acknowledgement. So once again, we are Group 10 EE Image Thermal Image Discretization Tool. We'd like to thank our sponsors from the NSAA, Brian Frymier and Timothy Poland, for sponsoring our project. We'd also like to thank our faculty advisor, Professor Raymond Jeffries, and our senior project coordinator, Professor Victor Marcus. And we'd also like to thank you for your time, and I hope that you enjoyed our presentation. We'd now like to open the floor for any questions you may have. Are there any questions? Sorry. Um, the one image you had with the uh, pixels on the outside, how they didn't quite mesh well. Did you think about doing any kind of uh, image processing before you put it there, such as converting to raster to vector to uh, get rid of that? Uh, we did try that method specifically, but I tried a few different things to get rid of it. Because it's in a regular shaped image, the original one, thought about just not using the first row, but it's hard to do that since the shape is irregular. Any of you can give us any shape image, honestly, so it's stuff to make. But I did not try to specifically you. See, it's stuff to make it general. Okay. So our whole point is to make this general so it can any type be performed on a range of type of images. So there's a lot of a lot of little things that <coughs> um, a lot of problems that do come up, but the point is to make it a generalized program. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Did you make a comparison more specific about the results from the MATLAB and Mathematica? Yes. How uh, does it look like? Uh, they're within half a degree within each program, in each temperature region. Which one is better to operate? Uh, the MATLAB program runtime is faster. Uh, well, that yeah, yeah, they're, they're very similar other than that. The, the graphical user interface is different on both uh, software <laughs> packages. Uh, but the big difference is only time. Thank you. Sir, so in the back. So the results of the became the original circuit board or 
Yes. Um, we had a sorry, the computer engineer from AMSA come in. Actually, uh, the first time he came, um, the original function we used, there's a function in MATLAB called um, RGB to index. Um, it actually wasn't as accurate as we thought, so we had to go back and uh, go to the closest matching temperature algorithm, and then that actually got us a lot closer to the temperature we were looking for. Like, there's certain um, hot spots in each mm -hmm. image where you can see, like, oh, that's that's got to be 110 degrees or 112 degrees. So uh, we would go off that. Previously, they had actually you, they had done this by hand and by eye, like so. They would divide it up using a ruler and just match the colors that they saw the closest one they could find on the scale and just guess. So um, I wouldn't say their original values were the most accurate. I think the program was more accurate. Do you know how they actually did the thermograms? I, we did, we did, they did not give us any information on how they took the pictures, and it was actually difficult to procure more images from them. Uh, they didn't give a whole lot of information on that. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.